What's up everybody? I just want to give a big shout out to the BridgeMine community because they have been reporting bugs these past couple days with View Creator. And I have a list of bugs here. Essentially, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be launching, technically it's uh, 12 AI agents at once, but the title of the video is going to be running 10 codex agents at once because essentially we have 10 tasks here that this agent up in the right hand corner created based on bugs that were found in the application so um, with that being said we're just going to dive right into it and we're going to see what this looks like and if it's able to solve all these bugs i'm going to put my face up here in the top right um, and we're just going to launch all these codex agents at once one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so these codex agents are all working on their tasks and a question that I get a lot on the channel is about essentially um, the agents working on top of each other and breaking functionality because it's not good for agents to work on top of each other. Well, yes, this is definitely an issue, but only if you make it an issue, right? Like if you tell an agent to go work on the home page of the website and then you essentially, um, you know, um, Okay, look at this. So th these all came back to me. So here's the content. Um, let me know if you want to adjust anything or need a real-time format. So it looks like we're actually going to have to now say, follow the plan and update the code. So each of these have now reviewed the plan. And now we're going to tell each of these agents to follow the plan and update the code. Uh, boom, 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 boom. And this it really is what the future is going to be looking like, is going to be managing a bunch of AI agents. So really, you know, if you can get good at managing AI agents and if you can get good at being able to do multiple things at once and understanding which AI agents are working where, then you're going to be incredibly successful. Um, that's just how it's going to work. Um, so let's see here. It looks like I have next steps here. So it says run the affected UI flow. So this one's done. I'm actually not going to worry about this one. This was a task that I was working on before I started recording. Um, but I just wanted to work on essentially these tasks here in this uh, in this one. So um, let's just kind of sit back and watch and see if this is able to update all of these. Because, you know, a really good strategy to use is when you are updating and managing agents, it is a good thing to use Codex GPT-5 High or GPT-5 High Codex. Uh, in Codex to be able to create a readme or a plan to be able to then pass into another agent with that plan. So if you think about this, you essentially use a one Codex window to be able to create the plans, right? So you create the plans and then in the other windows, like you launch a fresh window that has 100% context and you drop in that readme with the plan and then that, that um, codex window or that codex agent is able to focus fully on that plan specifically. So essentially what I had is, you know, the BridgeMine community, which also if you have not already joined the BridgeMine community, make sure you do so in the uh, link down below. There's totally free to join the Discord. Um, we have an incredible community and um, this these bugs were reported by the community. So um, being able to take that and then pass it into codex to be able to generate a plan to solve each of these bugs and then give each of these codex agents the plan to then be able to solve that bug and it's been working incredibly well i think yesterday when we were live streaming we solved like 20 bugs right and um, big shout out to the bridge mine community for finding those bugs and we're actually having a hackathon there's going to be a link in the description for that down below as well um, but the hackathon is coming up um, november 3rd to november 10th there's 500 dollars in prizes first place gets 250 second place gets 150 and third place gets 100 so we're all really pumped to do that but you know back to kind of what i was talking about with managing these agents and what the future is going to look like it's like hey um, at the end of the day once we especially is like when we get better tools and better models um, it is not going to make any sense for human beings to be um, essentially like writing code at all. It's going to be make more sense for this. Like, the, you know, I think that if you can push the limits now and get really good at managing AI agents, then you're going to be incredibly successful in the future because having those workflows and having them down is useful and, 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 it's, and it's valuable. It's a valuable skill um, to be able to take into the workplace, whether you are working for somebody else or if you have your own business and you want to start your own thing. Um, it's valuable across the board, right? Because you're essentially able to take you know, this skill of managing AI agents and then to take that into the workplace. And now I essentially have 10 AI agents working for me. And let's just like look. So this one, right? So this one is working on the Instagram bio pricing. This one is working on, um, let's see here, let's go back up to the top. So then this one is working on the playground metrics. 
This one is working on the agent creation fails and being able to have an error handler for that. And this one's working on the YouTube thumbnail generator. Um, this one is working on, let's see here, the task, the dashboard activity, which was empty. Um, so, you know, it's all of these things, all of these bugs, right, all of these tasks. And before you get started on them and before you pass them off to the AI agents, yes, you don't want a bunch of AI agents working on the same file, right? That is very bad and it can cause problems. And actually, on stream the other day, I did have um, the agents cross, right? And it is not good when you do that. It can actually really be bad because essentially what I've experienced and what will happen is if you have these two agents cross, what ends up happening is the agent essentially sees, okay, I essentially just crossed you know, uh, another agent, like the file that I was looking at is now completely different, right? Because let's say that you pass in to an agent, let's just say the homepage of your website, right? And you say completely, you know, you know, build a new UI for the homepage. Let's just use that example, right? Because it's simple, right? So then let's say you go over to another agent while that other agent is working. The other agent took a look at that original page of the website and it said, okay, here's how it looks. Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's how I'm gonna change things, right? And it starts working and thinking and processing and, and building, right? But it hasn't actually updated the file. And then you pass into the other agent, I want you to do X, Y, Z, right? And then that agent looks at the original file and it starts working, right? And then that agent, let's say it makes an update before the other one is done, right? What I've seen is it actually ends up rolling things back. So the other day when I had this issue, I was working on a billing page, right? In the billing page, I needed it updated so that it pulled in um, like the credit activity of users for viewcreator.ai. And these two agents crossed, right? And one of the agents had actually made a lot of progress and I was like, sweet, this is great, right? But then another one of my agents accidentally did cross the path and what ended up happening is that it rolled it back, right? So it rolled back the updates that I had actually liked. So I was like, dang, I was like, that stinks. So, you know, that's what you have to be wary of. And that was what typically will happen is that one of the agents will actually roll back the file to what it originally saw in the first place. It'll be like, whoa, this is different. And then it'll roll it back. That's what I've encountered. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have encountered anything different. So it looks like one of our first agents is done now. So um, updates that it made. So it says switch the YouTube thumbnail flow over to the flat per batch pricing and captured batch metadata alongside the job record. Perfect. Um, that's great. Uh, and then we still have nine of our agents running. Technically, uh, Technically still 10 because we have Claude. This is Claude code Opus over here. It's working on a long form to short form video. So if you guys know um, like Opus Clip and other softwares like that, they're able to take essentially long form content and create shorts or reels from it. That's a tool that we are building into View Creator and is going to be an incredible tool that uh, users can use to be able to help them uh, create content. And also it's gonna be pivotal for the UGC campaigns because as you guys know, essentially what we're going to build with View Creator is it's a platform, it's an all-in-one platform for creators and brands to be able to content, create content using AI, right? And right now, the AI tools are not at the point where it's crossed the threshold where, you know, image gen and video gen are actually useful to the end user, right? Like, you know, there can be a couple of viral like AI videos on the internet, right? But in the terms of me being able to go and create, for example, a meta ad or a TikTok ad using AI, right? Like, let's say I can just upload a picture of myself and say, create a, you know, a headshot video of me talking and pitching view creator, right? It can't do that yet. It's not very, it can, but it's not very good, right? So I think we're about a one to two years out. And what we're gonna do with view creator is we are going to create uh, one of the best platforms for that. Um, we're gonna be right on the cutting edge of this technology so that when these models are at that point where they are good enough, we're gonna have the end-to-end -end integration. We're gonna have a suite of platform tools. We're gonna have everything that creators and brands need to be successful using AI for content generation. And we're just gonna absolutely crush it. So that's the long-term vision of View Creator. But in this, you know, time period where that's not here yet, we're gonna build useful tools and build that all-in-one AI platform. And that is one of the tools that we're going to build is this long form to short form, just as an example. But, um, you know, one thing that I really like about GPT-5 Codex 
is that when you have it on the high mode, right? When you engage GPT-5 Codex High, you're able to run long running tasks. Like each of these tasks have been running for eight minutes each, right? And what I've seen is that yes, there are complaints about Codex taking too long to run, right? And that's actually what the, the perspective that I had it as well, is that I was like, man, Codex just takes too long to run. It's you know not worth it, right? But that actually is the nature of these CLI tools. So it's different from cursor, where cursor will you know take less to run, but you know not do as good of a job. Sometimes if you throw an issue on uh, you know GPT-5 Codex High, you know it could think for. I've had Codex GPT-5 Codex High agents that have have worked on a specific task for over an hour right in the same window over an hour which is incredible and each of these is, has now, now coming up on nine minutes here and what i've found is that you can actually one shot with gpt5 codex high very well especially if you if you use this workflow where essentially what we're doing is we're dropping in a bunch of readmes that are plans like look at this readme readme number one credits real-time sync credits cache invalidation a real-time refresh hook so it's building that it it created the plan in another chat and to be able to create that plan it evaluated the bug then what it did is that it then actually reviewed the code then in the readme it reviewed it said hey in this file on this line you're gonna need to update this and this is how you're gonna do it right and then you, when you pass that into fresh window then that agent can focus on that specifically it doesn't have to plan it out. It doesn't have to waste tokens planning it out. Another agent already did that. So you're essentially building a workflow where you have a plan, a planner and then an actual doer, an actual programmer. So, and then you obviously rest at the top managing these AI agents. And I do think that this is what the future is gonna look like. So it looks like a lot of these uh, agents are now actually integrating code. Like this one's integrating code. This one's integrating code. This one has not integrated any code yet. This one is. Uh, this one has been integrating code, this one as well, this one, this one. So the only one that's still kind of thinking and previewing code and making sure that it can do this refactoring um, is this one here. It looks like this task is actually pretty difficult. Um, but let's just keep letting this run. And I'm gonna sip my coffee here and just kind of sit back and let it do its thing. But yeah, I mean, this is 10, 10 Codex agents running at once, uh, solving bugs for us. I mean, this is, uh, this is the future, guys. This is insane. All right. All right, so these are still updating. Okay, this one's now done. This one just finished. Um, so it's asking me to smoke test to confirm the spinner clears, credits toast appears in the last update. So you can even see like after it, so this one ran for 10 minutes and 44 seconds is the final runtime for this one. And it said that it added a reusable credits refresh hook and wired it into the viral post page. So the terminal status transitions invalidate the cache and force fetch credits alongside update polling and active job tracking. Okay. Okay, this one is now updating code, it looks like. All right, this is, this is all looking good. And so I think like, you know, from my perspective in looking at, you know, the future, I don't know if like, this is probably pretty, um, what's the best word for it? This is like, these, these tools are going to be outdated very quickly. Like when you really think about it, you know, you're literally having AI agents work in a terminal and you're watching them work in a terminal. Like in a couple years, this is gonna be completely different. Um, like this is not uh, not gonna look like this, but it is interesting just to see the difference that's actually taken place. Like for example, a year ago, literally one year ago, I was still using ChatGBT to copy and paste code from 01 into my IDE VS Code which is unbelievable. Like when you really do consider the amount of change that's taken place. And I talk to people that are in the business world and in the finance world, um, people that I knew when I was in college, where they'll you know talk about how AI is a bubble, which nobody knows if it is or not, right? But the thing is, is that, you know, they'll be like, there's no use for it. I don't use it, it's overhyped, right? And I'm like, well, you know, that's just because it hasn't really reached your, 
uh, you know, your workspace yet, right? Like you're, you know, working in like Excel, you're working in a business environment. I think it's very interesting to see that, you know, everybody was like, hey, AI is going to take programmers jobs, you know, AI is going to take your job, whatever, whatever, right? But the thing is, is it's actually not going to take your job, it's going to like 10x you. And, and that's, that's the coolest part is that, you know, I, when I was in college, uh, some people would say, they would literally be making fun of the programmers saying, hey, like the AIs are going to take your job, right? And it was kind of funny because, you know, now you kind of see what's happened and it's like, actually, no, like they, the programmers have the best opportunity to actually utilize AI in 2025. Like, hey, as a business person, you don't have great opportunities. Like, what are you going to do? Use ChatGPT? Sure, ChatGPT can help you. It can help you be more productive. But it's not like this, having 10 AI agents work for you simultaneously. And um, that's what it's all about. I mean, it really is incredible. Um, so I'm just going to keep letting these agents run. Um, it looks like this is now updating a plan. And um, I'm trying to decide whether I should cut the video off now or just kind of let the, all of this run through so that you guys can essentially see um, what ultimately ends up happening and let all these run through. We are at six, about coming up on 16 minutes. Um, so I think that you guys kind of do get the point that you can do this, right? Um, and I'll let these run because some of these will actually be running for like up to 30 minutes and I don't want the video to be that long. So, you know, just as a summary, make sure that you start integrating a workflow where you plan out the steps for each agent and then you pass those readme files of the plan into another agent. I think it's incredibly important. I think that if you're not already doing this, you should. And um, just make sure that you are making the most of AI in 2025 and make sure that you're up to date with the newest tools and you're staying active in this space because the tools that exist today will not exist in six months. They'll have completely evolved, they'll be better, we'll have better models. So if you're not in this space, I highly recommend that you start pushing the limits pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI and really start building the future. And with that being said, if you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the future.